Okay. I'm going to tip out all of the tofu that I have. Squish the box a bit. Oops. Comes out very easily. And there's not too much liquid, but just a bit. We want to get that off. All right. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use a blender. To mix our tiramisu filling, okay? The mixture that we're going to put over the top of our biscuits. So I'm going to pop this into the blender now. Here we go. Some went past it. That's not a problem. Tip it in. All right. There you go. All right. I'm going to open my tin of coconut cream. And then when you gently open it, you can already see there's some more firmer bits in it and some more liquidy bits. We're going to not shake it too much because we're going to try and scoop the cream off. So we need half a cup, okay? This is half a cup and I'm going to try and scoop as much creamy bits that I can into my half cup. So I'm going to grab it here from the top and just scoop off the cream. All of it is cream, but if you use the firmer bits, the better. Because that means there's a bit more oil content in those parts, which will help us make the tiramisu a little bit firmer. All right, here we go. So I got those bits out first. And then we'll just top it up until we have half a cup of coconut cream. You can also pour it straight in from your can into your half cup. You don't have to scoop it. All right, here we go. I've got half a cup. And I'm going to add a half cup of coconut cream to the silken tofu in the blender. To use my spoon to scrape the last little bits out. There we go. Now that's two ingredients in there. The next one is we're going to measure out the sugar. Four tablespoons. One, two, three, and four. All right, I will put the next step, I'll put the lid on my blender and get ready to blend our mixture. We want it to be nice and creamy and no lumps in there. So I'm going to give it 60 seconds, my blender on the blend function, okay? Okay, so now we're going to mix in our cocoa powder. We're going to make the thick cocoa drink for our biscuits. We need a cup, one cup of hot water. Be careful if your water is very hot, that the parent helps you with it. So pour it in a cup or pour it in a measuring cup. I'm using this one, a little measuring jug. And then we're going to add our two tablespoons of cocoa powder. And it's going to be really nice and thick and rich because we want it to cover the biscuits to make it nice and chocolatey. And then give it a good mix. You can use a spoon or you can use a little there we go. Well, 
rather use a little bit less water if you want. If you haven't measured out the water yet, go with half a cup. Because what we want is we want it nice and thick. Mix it all in so there's no lumps. Now that feels really nice and rich. Next step will be fun. We'll be starting to layer our tiramisu into our container. That container, when you choose it, the best thing is if you have a lid for it. If not, you can use some flex wrap or cling wrap, but it will need to go in the fridge to sit a little bit before you can actually eat it because you want all of the flavors that we're putting together now to soak through all of the layers. Okay. Is everybody up to this step? Yep, thumbs up, beautiful. Now I'm grabbing my glass. And my biscuits. And I'm going to use a spoon to bring the biscuit back out again. I'm going to just drop it into my chocolate mixture. Make sure it's all drowned and soaked and covered by chocolate. And then I lift it up again. It's coming out, it's all covered nicely in chocolate. And then I put it into my jar. I tried it before, it worked. That's funny, this one is a different shape. I'll try my other glass. <laughs> All right, let's do this again. Put that in here. At the bottom now. And on the top of the biscuit, we will pour in a bit of our tiramisu mixture. Just a bit, because we're going to repeat the layers. There. Yeah. Now I've got one layer done. And we're going to just keep repeating the same steps over again until we get to the top. Or if you don't want to do that many layers in one jar, you can just stop earlier and continue into the next portion. Depending if you are splitting it out in different containers or if you're doing it in the one. Are you using different containers or just one? Can you restart that step? The yeah, yeah, sure. So you take your biscuit and you drop it into your thick chocolate. Make sure it's covered all over. And then you lift your biscuit out. I'm using the spoon to lift it out. You can also use your fingers if you want because the water should have cooled off by now. How do you get the thick um, yeah. liquid? Say that again. How do you get the thick liquid? Oh, how we did the chocolate. So you use, start with half a cup of water, not too much, and then add two big tablespoons of cocoa powder. You know, just the, the powder you would use in, in, in baking or in cooking. So like a chocolate powder, but it has to be cocoa powder, not like a Milo or Ovaltine. Mix that in until it's not lumpy anymore. And then that's your thick chocolate mixture for your biscuit. So. And now for the top, all we gotta do in the end, we're going to decorate it with some cocoa powder by putting it through a sieve. Just sprinkle it on top and we can grate some dark chocolate over it too. Put our lids on and then just keep it in the fridge. All right, what I'm going to do now is 
I'll take a bit of the chocolate powder. I'm going to tap my stiff on the side a bit, just like with powdered sugar. So it just gently sprinkles on the top like it's snowing. There you go. And then I'll take some dark chocolate and a grater. That's a really fun bit. I'm going to grate a bit of dark chocolate over it as well. And that will give it a nice rich flavor. Crack up. Ah, there you go. <laughs> That's even easier. That's what it looks like. I chose a really thin piece of chocolate so it keeps breaking. There we go. Now I'll lift this up so you can see them a bit closer. That's our cocoa powder and the grated chocolate. And on the side, we have the layers of the biscuits and the tofu mixture. You can see that there. All right, what I'm going to do now is put the lids on. Put one, two, and let it set in the fridge. Okay, well, let's get our next ingredients out slowly and have a look at them again. What we will need is four ingredients for our next step. The second recipe that we're making, we won't be able to do all of it together today, but I will show you how to bring it to the end. Okay, I will explain and you'll see what I mean. We will start with putting together our one and a half cups of desiccated coconut and one quarter cup of raspberries and the maple syrup will go into a food processor. Okay, if you have a large food processor, the amount can go straight in. If you're using a small one like I do, do it in two steps. Mine is not going to hold all of it. Right. Put it in and mix it all together, scrape it off the sides in between if it comes up, put it all back down. And then keep mixing until it's a nice thick paste. Yeah. All right, did you hear that? All right, I'm going to measure out. My one cup of coconut that I'm going to start with. And then my raspberries. They're very lumpy. Break it up. Good trick. Oh, mine are coming out with the big lumps. I'll show you a trick. Maybe you know this already. If your berries are too lumpy inside your bag in the freezer, what you can do is close your bag. Make sure it's nicely closed. And then you can just, holding it tight, tap it on the, on the firm surface, like a chopping board, for example. And that will break up the frozen pieces inside. Okay. Put this in. Add a bit of maple syrup. Since I'm going in two portions, I'm not going to do all of it just yet. That will be my first one. And it will get a bit noisy now while I'm whizzing it. All right, whiz it up. There we 
we go. You can have a peek inside. This is what it looks like inside. Okay. I'm going to just check that nothing's really stuck there by going in with my spatula. And take it for another spin. Fantastic. Now what I will do is I will scrape out what I have. And I will add my second half of the ingredients. If you have a bigger food processor, you can do this in one go. Okay. Now I just need half a cup. Even a bit less of the last one. How long do we blend it for the first time? Well, the first time, did you do it in two steps or do you have a larger food processor? I got a large one. A large one, so you do it all together. So you need to blend it until it looks like this. See? If you take it out and then you can. Bring it together with your fingers and it sticks together nicely and everything is evenly, evenly chopped. And is like a mixture like this that you can bring together and it's like a, like a Play-Doh almost. Then you know it's ready, okay? <laughs> okay. Second one. Beautiful. Now I'm going to add this batch to my first one. And then we have our raspberry filling, our raspberry treats finished. I'm going to mix it all through. You don't have to do this if you've done it all in one step. How does the mixture look like? Does it look similar to mine? Looks good, Ivy. Nice. All right. Now we're coming to the crafting step. <laughs> It's going to be cold, obviously, the mixture, because you just used frozen raspberries. So your fingers might freeze a little while you do this, but I'm sure it will be fine in the end. And the reward will be delicious. When we start rolling our treats, you need to have a little container ready to go. Or if you have space for a baking tray that you can line with a baking sheet, you can do that as well. Because in the end, what we're going to do with these ones, we are going to put them in the freezer for at least an hour before we can actually cover them in chocolate. Okay. So I will grab a container and that's where I'm going to put them in. Okay. Got one of these. So what we're doing is we're grabbing a little bit of our raspberry mixture. And then, first of all, Aiden and Rohan have a look. If it's not working, because it is very crumbly, squish it first in your palm. The first step is to squish it in your palm. Then we'll bring it together, okay? And then you have to be very gentle to use your fingertips. And then you squish it with your fingertips, okay? You can't roll this mixture. You need to gently squish it together. And then you have a ball like this. And you place that next to the other one, OK? 
Okay, so first step is push it in your palm. And then use your fingertips. You can try different sizes to make them a bit bigger. They're probably easier to bring together. But then they might be harder to eat. <laughs> And just like that, you're just going to work your way through the whole filling. This is a good time to ask for help if you've got anyone around who's keen to do some craft. Okay. Great teamwork over there, Aiden and Rohan. Maybe one more I can fit. Push it all together. There we go. My container is just perfect. There we go. All right, I will show you now what we're going to do with the chocolate. So once your, your berries are frozen, I will switch containers around. I've prepared this one earlier, so I will show you. So these ones are totally frozen now. There's some more under there. I don't know if you can hear it. <laughs> they're so frozen <laughs> these guys you will take out and you will put them into your liquid chocolate that you will make like this so when you melt chocolate it is important that you're not melting it in the pot where the chocolate sits in so you will take your dark chocolate that you have, put it into a metal pot, okay? Or you can put it in a glass jar as well. It's just easier in a pot because it has a handle where you can actually lift it out as well and, um, and control it better, okay? So you break up your chocolate, you put it in a pot. The smaller you make your bits, the easier it can melt, right? You break up your 200 grams of chocolate, put it in a pot like this, and then sit it in a pot that is bigger than the pot you're using. So they actually go into each other, right? So this one kind of just fits. So I would use a even bigger pot with water. So what you will do, you will fill your second pot with water, make it nice and hot, and then you will see already as it's heating up your water in the other pot underneath, how the chocolate in here will start melting until it's all melted. And it will be warm. That's why chocolate melts, right? Because it gets warm. And that's why it's important now that our raspberry bits are actually frozen because they will stay together with the warmth. And the raspberry inside will melt as fast. So what you'll do now when you have your chocolate melted and your frozen raspberry balls ready, you will have a little plate or tray or container, it doesn't really matter. So you can put it back into the freezer or in the fridge. You can also let it sit on the bench top because the chocolate, as soon as it gets cold and it will touch the cold raspberries, it will start hardening up. I'll show you. So you grab your raspberry ball, you put it in your chocolate. Cover it all over. Get it out again. We'll drain. Pick it up. Place it on the plate. And you can feel <laughs> how quickly it will already start going hard. Okay, I'll show you again. 
on it. Put in the chocolate, make sure it's covered all over. And the chocolate will start hardening up already. So bring it out with your spoon. Bring it on your plate or on your tray. I don't know if you can see it in my camera, but it's like when you're using the ice cream crust, the chocolate on your ice cream, it starts going hard. I can already touch it and it's not even sticky. That's how quickly it starts going hard. So if you want to eat them straight away, just let them sit for a few minutes and they'll be yummy. Or you can put them back in the fridge and save them for later. Put them in the freezer and you can store them for a few days longer. Okay? So this is what you can do in about an hour's time. Do you have any questions? Do you understand the last step? Yeah? Make sure that with the melting chocolate, your parents actually assist you because the water will get quite warm and the pot will get quite warm, okay? The bottom one. So they can help you with the hot pot. All right. If you guys have no more questions, thank you everybody for coming. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Emily? Uh, thank you so much.